Good day everyone, this is Tagud Levin and we are the group 6 and we will be reporting what is blind pilotage. So first of all, before we will delve into the lesson, so we will first have our ILO or the intended learning outcomes which is define what is blind pilotage, define the factors to consider in blind pilotage, define the proper actions and procedures of navigational watch keeping during blind pilotage, and demonstrate blind pilotage techniques. So, first of all, is that what is uh, blind pilotage? So, blind pilotage is all about navigating or the navigation of the ship through restricted waters in low visibility with little or no uh, recourse to the visual observation of the objects outside the ship. So, in other words, the visibility is restricted either by fog or smoke. So, the principal uh, non-visual aid to navigation that enables uh, this to be done is a high-definition warning surface radar or ARPA or the automatic radar plotting aid but also it includes also the all available uh, non-visual aids are also employed uh, which also includes like the AIS and the ECDIS. So what are the factors to consider in blind pilotage? So, first of all, is that the degree of the risk involved in restricted waters must be carefully assessed prior to entering the, the channel or waterway. So, bridge watches may be uh, doubled up and watch level should be upgraded. So, next one is that uh, congestion which is due to other uh, shipping should also be considered. So, both uh, radars or the ARPA should be in operational or should be working. So, consequences of uh, failure of the radar or other uh, visual aids should be also considered and risk assessment should be done. So, next one is the availability of uh, all the navigational aids uh, which can be used in during restricted visibility or in blind pilotage and it also must be taken account such as the radio beacons or the racons or the automatic identification system boys or stations or AIS and also the vessel traffic services or the VTS also so parallel indexing can be used as a powerful tool for position monitoring and execution of the passage since uh, through using the parallel indexing we can determine if the ship if the ship goes uh, off track from its course uh, in respect to the nearest land or while transiting in a channel. So, next one is the plan the passage so as to steer a course to pass a given distance of a radar con conspicuous point or a land or shall we say uh, an island or con conspicuous points. So, alter course of a navigational mark or point of land. So, those are the factors to consider uh, during blind pilotage. So anyway, why should we consider these factors in doing blind pilotage? So always remember that in blind pilotage, the, the area of the visibility is restricted. So without using the radars or other navigational aids, so there's nothing the seafarer or the watchkeeper can see outside the vessel. So that's why we should consider these factors in order to avoid marine accidents or incidents, especially collision. Hi everyone, this is Cadet Tanto Jason Ray and I am tasked to report about the proper actions and procedures of navigational watchkeeping during a blind pilotage. Let's go! Alright, so proper actions and procedures of navigational watchkeeping. So the lookout must be able to give full attention to keeping of the proper lookout. As stated in the collision regulation, uh, rule number five, every vessel shall use all available means appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and condition so as to make a full appraisal of the situation and of the risk of collision. So no other task, no other duties shall be undertaken or assigned which could interfere with the task. So we cannot do any multitasking here. If you are tasked to do the lookout, look, look out alone. Okay? Alright. Next. 
The duties of a lookout and helmsman are separate, and the helmsman is not be to be considered as the lookout while steering. The helmsman is assigned to steer the wheel of the ship, but it's not considered to be a lookout while steering. As what I have said, uh, we cannot do any multitasking here. Okay? Alright. So next, the OOW or the officer on the watch must ensure that lookouts clearly understand their duties and the system of reporting. Alright, this means that lookout must uh, know and understand how and when to report when, when they see a target. Um, uh, they should know what they are going to say and uh, when will be the time that they are going to report it. Uh, are they going to report when it's near or far? Uh, something like that. Now, at the discretion of the master, the OOW may be the sole lookout in the daylight under certain condition. So, um, when this means that when the master take over, the OOW could be the lookout. Um, he will be doing the. Uh, he will be, uh, use all available means appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and condition, because there are some certain condition that. Uh, we really need to call the master and the next night we will know what the, the, uh, what are those certain condition and by the way the certain condition the situation has been carefully assessed no and it has been established without doubt that it is safe to operate with a sole lookout and full account has been taken of all relevant factors including but not limited to the following so here are the certain um, conditions that we really need to call the master right so the state of weather for example there is a bad weather so uh, bridge must need uh, many personnel or crew there uh, uh, so, uh, uh, someone with a lookout the helmsman and the master should be should be called to uh, for the uh, general command of the ship okay, right? In, uh, the same uh, situation as well in with the state of the visibility for example there will be a uh, restricted visibility because of fog so uh, many personnel is needed in the bridge so that they can maintain a proper lookout in the radar in the in the vicinity if they can see small vessels or objects or any islands all right and also traffic density including the presence of fishing vessels and the proximity of dangers of to navigation or hazards to navigations and lastly attention required when navigating in or near traffic separation scheme all right so um, as we all know traffic separation scheme is a very narrow channel uh, we can we the ship will navigate in a very narrow channel so we really need to call the master so that uh, he can handle the ship well okay, because the master is the most experienced person on the ship and by the way um, there are separate rules in the narrow channel and traffic separation scheme and uh, I would like you to know that um, some of the narrow channel are not tra uh, traffic separation scheme but all traffic separation scheme our narrow channel all right hello guys so this is Tero Mark Angelo and I'm going to show you the additional checks that you should take note of so first is have conditions been reported to the master next have lookouts been posted properly and increased as required have engineers been given notice for standby engines our radar or ARPA in operational conditions so we should take note of that has tuning been adjusted to the optimum condition has range been set to the proper scale which is X for X band is 3 cm for short distance and S band 10 cm for long distance so next slide please our other vessels or moving objects plotted properly has manual steering operation been checked? 
in congested waters has the steering system been changed over to manual operation and have the navigation lights been switched on is VHF listening watch maintained on channel 16 and a proper channel stipulated by local rules and lastly is the vessel proceeding at a safe speed according to the call regs so next please Next is, are appropriate fog signals been sounded? So what are the appropriate fog signals? So for the vessel making way through the water, it is one long blast at not more than two minutes interval. And for the vessel making no way through the water, two long blasts about two seconds apart, separated at not more than two minutes interval. And for vessels not under command or restricted in ability to maneuver or constrained by its draft, it is one long blast followed by two short blasts at not more than two minutes interval. So this additional checklist is very important to take note so that we can um, take mind or we can ensure the safety of the vessel or wala tayong malintan okay so next slide please so the next topic will be about the blind pilotage techniques which will be presented by the next presenter so thank you good day everyone i'm joseph kanania teron i'm going to talk about blind pilotage techniques so the first technique i'm going to talk about is maintaining a specified track so this can be achieved by um, using parallel indexing technique. So this technique is used as a measure to monitor the progress of a vessel on the track and to minimize the cross-track distance and to keep vessel at a safe distance from the shoreline or um, conspicuous objects. So in this example, we have a land echo and we have this island, which is point D. And then at the land echo, we have points A and B as uh, um, our radar points. So if we desire to um, pass in this um, specified, with a specified distance in this congested water, we need to use parallel indexing. So to keep our uh, vessel safe. So of our radar conspicuous object, set the index line parallel to the intended trap. Draw the parallel through E in China graph pencil or an erasable overhead projector marker and steer a course so that the relative track of D remains on parallel index line DE. So points A and B of uh, this land echo can be used in a like fashion. So this distance in this line in between is what we call the um, cross index range or CIR. So the next technique I'm going to talk about is altering course. So let's focus on our example. So in our example, the ship is approaching harbor in a selected track par parallel to the coast. In order to enter, it needs to alter course to port. So on the chart, there are two conspicuous points, which are also conspicuous on radar. So point B, uh, this island right here, is a small island situated close to the shore on the eastern side of the entrance while point C is a headland marking the western side of the entrance. So both B and C appear to be suitable marks in which the course alteration can be made. If C is chosen, the moment at which the um, course should be altered will be determined by radar bearing. Whereas if B is chosen, it will depend on the radar range. From this, it is clear that at the moment the alteration is made, the chosen ob object should be near to 90 degrees from the future um, track as possible. In this case, B should be selected. On the chart, draw lines parallel to the new course through the edge of B and through the plotted position of will over, so allowing for the turning radius of the vessel. So the first line will give you the cross index range for commencing your turn. The second line will give you the new track when the turn is completed. 
So now the plot the two parallel and x lines on the PPI cursor at the scale to be used and rotate the cursor to the intended new track. So when the echo of B cuts the furthest line, put the wheel over and commence the turn. The echo of B will then appear to follow the dotted track and eventually coincide with the nearest line being the new track. Subsequently, the right edge of C might be used to continue the approach on the new course. Hello everyone, I'm Albert Carl Alberto Valles and I'm going to report or to continue uh, the topic of the techniques on the blind pilotage. So as I continue, we have here the anchoring, so parallel and parallel index technique. So uh, if uh, a vessel wanted to anchor in the position indicated as the as indicated same as the picture, so uh, this procedure must be followed. So first is that uh, the approach course or track uh, should be drawn on the applicable chart and with this with the uh, anchor uh, position clearly marked and then the track should be uh, marked back uh, at one uh, cable distance from the anchor position. And next is that on a chart radar uh, conspicuous uh, point should be uh, selected and in this case, a uh, projection um, should be drawn. Uh, uh, in case, um, in this case, um, projection of land. So that would be the object B. So uh, the second uh, target. So uh, a line is drawn through this point. So po so parallel to the approach uh, track and the perpendicular drawn from uh, point A to point B. Uh, same as here on our um, illustration, uh, illustration. So um, AC is the cross index range from a AC is uh, the index. Uh, AC is the cross index range, and BC is called the dead range. So the PPI uh, cursor is then prepared. So as indicated in the sketch or in the illustration, uh, the display scale. Uh, should be used uh, with the parallel index line uh, drawn at the uh, cross index range from the center and next is that the, the dead range or the BC line uh, is, is then marked uh, and also the intervals of cable to the limit of the range in the cursor so the cursor is then uh, rotated so that uh, the index line are parallel, are parallel, parallel to the approach track and um, lastly, uh, as the ship approaches, uh, the distance to go is indicated on the cursor uh, by the position of the echo of B. So that would be uh, the uh, procedures to be followed uh, if you are going to have uh, this technique, the anchoring. So to proceed, uh, we have here the last technique. Uh, we have the anti-collision. So, um, Anti-collision is a parallel index technique. Parallel, parallel index technique also. So, uh, it this uh, technique uses both in fog and in good visibility. So, if the parallel index is aligned with a few successive plots of another ship, so the rest of collision uh, can be rapidly assist. And also, if the relative track of the other ship passes through the center of the PPI, then the ship is on a collision course so as the illustration uh, as in the illustration uh, ship a is on a collision and and the ship b will pass clear so uh, as uh, we we can already uh, illustrate it up based on the um, illustration so that the ship a is um, prior uh, or is in uh, is is on a um, Collision is, uh, is prone for a collision uh, well, while the ship B will pass clear. And the closest point of approach or the CPA of B of the ship B is on point X. And XY is the cross index range. So that will be the procedure or the, 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 
the explanation on that um, illustration. So, to proceed, uh, uh, so that would be all for the last um, for the techniques of the blind pilotage. And I would like also to thanks to this um, link to so because th these links provide us the, this information. The marine uh, teacher dot com, uh, marine uh, sea dot org, uh, safety for sea dot com, and ships business dot com. So that would be the end of our discussion. And thank you for listening and have a good day.